Glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace, as I always say. Lucifer is on Lake Roll. In our court system, in our prison system, in the current society that we live in, I'm sure as you all know that when a person is on death row, they stay on death row in prison for some years, a period of time, before ultimately they're either given lethal injection or the death chair. Uh, most states is le lethal injection, if not all states. But you have an idea of how that process works. America, or the court systems, have taken that model from the Most High God. Because according to the scriptures, Lucifer is on Lake Row. That's a spiritual version of death row. And that is the reason for all the problems in our society today. All of the wickedness that we're seeing being conducted by our politicians who have betrayed the Constitution, but most importantly, have betrayed the Word of God, which is the real Constitution. And they've committed crimes against humanity, poisoning the food putting all of these viruses, causing famine, causing all types of issues for the masses. All of this stems from Lucifer being on Lake Row. I'm going to be playing snippets of a video which was an hour and a half long that was done by Bishop Nathaniel who is the bishop, the head of IUIC, Israelites United in Christ. And he, I agree with him on half of the things that he says in this video. Unfortunately, the things I don't agree with him on are deal-breaking things that the Most High is going to determine for whether or not you'll enter the kingdom of God. The things I disagree with him on is in regard to the faith. All of, all of the things that we have to conquer in this life is a result of our faith. What source? Who's the source of your faith? If it's not Christ, and if it's not a lifestyle of prayer, where you're pulling from that source to fight against the demonic forces which also work on behalf of Lucifer and that they, they, they are on Lake Row demons okay the scripture says that Lucifer drew one third of the stars from heaven so he convinced uh, as the scripture also says innumerable amount of angels to go against the Most High and get kicked out of heaven. But Bishop Nathaniel disagrees. He believes otherwise. So I'm going to play uh, the first portion of this video and I'm going to pause it and interrupt every now and then. Lucifer, how does name came about and who is established the identity for the benefit of my audience? Who is Lucifer? Well, Lucifer is the nation of Esau, the nation of Edom. That's the so-called white people, mainly the United States of America, the Caucasians of the United States of America. They are Lucifer. Lucifer is a spirit. He's a spiritual criminal. He's a fallen cherub angel who was created by God and he tried to foolishly attempt to overthrow God. Therefore, God cast him out of heaven. Lucifer is not the white man. The white man 
the so-called white man, the Jewish, the, these Khazars, Caucasians, they, they've been a vessel, a human vessel for a spiritual being, which is Lucifer. Okay, he's a spiritual criminal. You can't cast the flesh on the spirit and vice versa. The flesh is used by the spirit. The, these are just meat suits. And it's actually an offense to God, which I'm going to get into a little bit later, to say otherwise. Because the, the power that Christ has given us has been to cast out devils. That not human beings, but devils, spiritual creatures, spiritual beings. So if, if Lucifer is a fleshly being and God is spirit, we would agree on that. Then you're diminishing the power that God has given us to cast out devils. Lucifer is not the spiritual demon that got in a fist fight with God and God punched him in the face and kicked him out of heaven. That's Greek mythology. That's not what the Bible is talking about. Mm -hmm. And the proof that that's not what it's talking about is when you go to the book of Job, chapter one. Let me go there first. Okay. Job, chapter one. I'm going to read verse uh, six. It reads, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So Satan is up and down in the earth, and he goes before the Lord, and they're having a conversation. If God punched him in the face and cast him out, OK, that's obviously not true because now Satan comes before the Lord. Again, you cannot credit human beings with the work of spirits. That's simply one dimensional thinking. Satan is a spiritual being. You mentioned how is it that he can go before the presence of God? Well, Satan was making a report to God, and that's not necessarily saying that he was in heaven when he made the report. God is omnipresent. He's not like a conqueror or a king, an earthly king, who's only at one place at one time. So when you go before the council, you're just going to the king's throne. The throne of God is, is different from going before the presence of God. And, and there, that's just, those are just things that spiritually, we as humans, we can't understand. It's just like a parole officer. Satan is a prisoner on this earth. A parolee, when they go before their parole officer, they can go to meet with him and report to him, but they just better make sure they stay their butt in that house because they're on house arrest. It's the same with Satan. So this earth is his prison. How can you say that? That's that that proves that the white man is Lucifer just because Satan is going up before God that mean it. No, Satan reports to God. Okay, he works on the left hand side. God uses him for his glory. Because if we don't know evil, we won't appreciate his goodness. The same way Lucifer didn't appreciate his goodness. He had no opposition to the goodness of God. And also, how would you explain how Satan ended up in the Garden of Eden? Why did God say to Adam and Eve, replenish the earth? That means there were, be there were beings here on the earth before God even created Adam and Eve. 
the, the, the scripture says in Genesis 1 that darkness was on the face of the deep. Where did the darkness come from? God, God is light. You, you can't, darkness can't come from him. And obviously he was in the beginning because God is an eternal being. The darkness was on the face of the deep because that was right after God cast Lucifer and an innumerable amount of angels from heaven or from what, whatever uh, hemisphere that they were supposed to serve the most high because that's why the angels were created. And Lucifer and all of his beauty was supposed to use all of his attributes and all of his gifts to worship the Most High. We're talking about a spiritual being. But he became darkness. And the darkness that was on the earth, God separated it. He didn't create it. All, everything that took place, God separated. So there, the, the darkness was already on the earth before Adam and Eve was created. The dirt, everything, the waters. Satan it, it operates in the water kingdom, but I don't have time to get into that. But these are things in Genesis 1 that I'm sure you can go back and read, sir, bishop, and you can see for yourself. These things were already created. The white man didn't. The white man came from the black man. And that that was a, a curse of leprosy, which I'll get into in a, another video. But black men turned white because they disobeyed God. Those, those were curses. And also, the uh, the so how would you also explain in Genesis six when the sons of God came down and lay before with the daughters of men. The, the, they started corrupting the DNA, so that started to change how humans look. Many times, people say, oh, God set the white man in Israel. No, 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 no. God did not set the white man over there in Israel. The League of Nations set the white man in Israel. Hmm. 1948, May 1948. You can look it up. The League of Nations, America, yeah. Britain, set the white man over there. And they took white people from Poland, Czechoslovakia, Germany, Russia, various European places, and put them, colonized them in that land. That's what they did. I completely agree. The League of Nations did colonize the so-called white man into Israel with the inspiration of demon forces because Satan desperately needs to work through a bloodline. The so-called black man or Hebrew man was cursed and cut off from the Most High. He said we would do 400 years of, of, of slavery in a land that served foreign gods, uh, of a God that we did not know. And that was the time frame in the 20th century. And as he mentioned in 1948, where they sent them over there from, from the mountainous regions. regions. They're a mountain people. Satan could no longer use a cursed people. The, uh, in ancient Babylon, they, the Freemasonry that whites adopted, ancient Babylon was worshiping fallen angels. So they had, uh, they they were using that vessel, and that's what got the so-called black man cut off from the Most High, because they turned to foreign gods, Asherah, Molech, Nimrod. They started to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God told man not to eat from. They began to adopt the teachings of the serpent. So when God cut the Hebrews off the, the white nations he allowed them to prosper 
Okay, but Satan desperately needed a bloodline, especially after Christ came and died for our sins. Because prior to the New Testament, demons couldn't get cast out. You had to kill the person. That's why in the Old Testament, men and women were stoned to death. For, for small issues, they were stoned to death. That's why you ought to thank God for his grace in this new covenant. I agree with the bishop that those people in Israel are, are not the real Jews. The scriptures tell us that in the book of Revelations. Jesus said they, they are of the synagogues of Satan. So those are not the real Jews. Where I disagree with him is he, everything he's saying is going off of the old covenant. And we're in the new covenant. If you're going to follow the old covenant, you should still be stoning people to death. Including some of your followers who I'm, I'm sure they're not keeping all the laws. I'm sure you're not keeping all the laws. There's no way to keep all 600 and something of those laws. So preaching in the old covenant they did, they, where they stoned people to death, they stoned them to death. Because Jesus had yet to come to die for our sins, which was a perfect sacrifice done one time for all sins of all humanity. Okay, it's, it has nothing to do with how good the black man is or the white man is. It's how good he is. His righteousness demonstrates our unrighteousness. Okay. Okay. Our righteousness, those who believe in him, our righteousness is in him. Okay? They stoned people to death in the Old Testament because the spirit that was using that human vessel, there was no way to get that spirit out. They didn't have the power. So God gave them the laws so that they can keep it. And that was a pre preventative measure. To prevent them from getting demon possessed. Okay, it goes on. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now, the strangers in this chapter is referring to the other nations. They're going to be joined with the 12 tribes of Israel when God brings them back to the land. Mm -hmm. But how? Because everybody wants to know about the kingdom of heaven, Alfonso. What is it going to be like? Isaiah 14 is going to show us, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Woo! Let's pause right there. Let, there will be no equality in the coming kingdom of heaven on earth. It says, the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. You see how, like right now? We're the servants and handmaids of white people. Mm. Oh, it's going to be flipped around. It's going to go up. It's going to go right side up. Let me say it that way. Then watch this. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So now the Bible's telling us in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to rule our oppressors. That's justice. That is justice. Okay. I absolutely agree. When Christ comes to reestablish his kingdom, this earth will be done away with. As the scripture tells us, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, which is the new Jerusalem. Now, Lucifer, Satan, has to do his sentence for 1,000 years to eternity. The, the, the scripture says that he'll be cast into the bottomless pit for a thousand years and then after a time after a thousand years he'll be let out to go out and deceive the nations one last time before he's cast into the lake of fire for eternity but during that thousand year period uh, the white nations are going to have to do slavery. And that's what the Bible said, right about that. 
I mean, if you have an issue with that, take that up with God. But that's what the Bible says. Why, why is that, though? Because when this earth comes to an end, God, his word says, I will curse. I will curse you up to the third and fourth generation. That's what he said to the Hebrew people. But that law applies for all humanity. So when the world comes to an end and Christ comes to reestablish his kingdom, the white nations who will have destroyed this earth, they're already destroying it. I mean, all of your people are in power. They will have no generations to come after them. There is no third because the world has come to an end. Now, now we're off into eternity. Therefore, that's why they have to do their thousand years of, of slavery. But those who don't make it into the kingdom are going to, to the brimstone. They're going to hell for eternity. People will say, well, is race in the Bible? Why are you making this about race? Or they may look at the bishop uh, and they may have some cause because he's right. He's wrong about so many things, key things, the most important things, but on issues like this, he's right about. But race is in the Bible. The scripture tells us that the elder shall serve the younger. It's talking about Jacob and Esau. But Esau is the white nations. Esau is Edom. That's Rome. Jacob is Israel. He changed his name to Israel, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. But that's why the Hebrew apostles, the 12 apostles who were of Hebrew descent, they actually have their own throne on the throne of God. Their thrones are below the throne of God. That's race. That's, that's, those are Hebrew men on the throne of God, below the throne of God. Okay, that's, as he said, that's justice. But also you have the 12 tribes of Israel, which will be written on the, and this is described in the book of Revelation. Now, for those whites who believed in Christ and accepted him as their Lord and Savior, they'll receive crowns. But it, it'll be similar to in this society that we live in. Do, do you know some supervisors or even managers or even the president of the United States who is black? Yeah. But the, the system is run by people who are of Caucasian descent, uh, the uh, Jews. Okay, those who say they are Jewish, they put the ISH on the end. Okay, because this is their kingdom. This fallen world is their kingdom. But in the next kingdom, the eternal kingdom, the, those who you see in, in prominent positions in the kingdom of heaven will be of Hebrew descent. There will be some white. But I believe the curse against their people is they chose this fallen world. The curse against them is so severe because after Christ died on the cross for our sins, they've been the ones in power. So again, like I said, Christ gave us the power to cast out demons to whom much is given, much is required. You, you are over this world. This world that we live in, you control the banks, you control the uh, politicians, you control uh, the mortgages, the financial system, the economic system, all the economies. You, you control the oil overseas. Uh, all of this is the kingdom of the so-called white man, the Jewish. Okay. Therefore, the God looks at it as you had the authority to spread the word that's what comes with white privilege if you a god will ask on judgment day why didn't you use your privilege to spread my word you had an advantage 
Okay, I'm not going to get too too deep into that. But churches don't preach this. And I commend the bishop for preaching this, although he's wrong about so many different things, but churches are not preaching this. There's there's a curse against hu humanity. We're all aware of that, the curse against uh, 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 Adam. We all suffer from that curse from him eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All of us who believe in God, believe in Christ, will agree with that. But there's also curses from your own personal sins. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. You reap what you sow. God is not mocked. Okay, but there's a, there are bloodline curses within certain families. There's also a curse against the nation the land is cursed the land is defiled and then there are curses against every race every race of people has a curse against it the curse against the so-called black man the hebrew man is the 400 years of slavery that we have done okay and god god said i will send you back into Egypt. America is spiritual Egypt. I will send you back on, on ships. He talks about uh, uh, us being a byword. We all know what that byword is. He also talks about you know, uh, we will have a yoke of iron on our neck. So we've done the, our, our servitude. But in that next life, the white races, and not only the white races, the Iranians, the Arabs, uh, all Ar uh, Arab nations, Iranians, Iraqis, uh, the Chinese, Asians, Koreans, they're going to have to do servitude as well. Justice. Justice. So, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. This is about world domination. Us, the 12 tribes of Israel, we're going to rule our oppressors, Alfonso. That's what the Bible says. This is not me speaking racial epithets or racial rhetoric. This is what the Bible says. See, we've never seen justice in this world at all. But the Bible says there will be true justice. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Let's see what it means by hell. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth. Who are the chief ones of the earth? It has raised up from their throne all the kings of the nations. So the kings of the nations are going to rise up. That's what verse 9 is saying. Because the kings of the earth are in hell. And when the Bible talks about hell in this chapter, it's not talking about the middle of the earth. You're in fire. It's talking about a low condition. You're kept in a very low subservient condition. No, it speaks about the kings of the earth who were seduced by hell spirits once they died. Okay, the body, it, it goes back into the ground and then their soul goes somewhere. Okay, if they did not know Christ, then they go out of the presence of God for eternity. When it says hell is excited about you and set to meet thee at thy coming, is speaking about portals that open up right there where that person died. A portal opens up and their spirit, their soul is dragged to hell. That's what that scripture speaks about. Good morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? So Lucifer again means light bearer. I'm going to put that picture on the screen again. America is a light bearer to all nations. If you want uh, wealth, if you want knowledge, whatever you want, you come to the United States of America. If you want freedom, they say, come to America. Come here. That's what it means. She's a light bearer to the nations. In reality, so in reality, is it not true? Oh, no, no, because when you get here, you find out that this, this place you thought was the golden city is a kingdom of darkness because it's evil on top of evil. Now, watch this. Notice where it says, which dits weaken nations. So Lucifer, Babylon the Great, the oppressing city, the golden city, 
would weaken nations. One way that America weakens nations is through their economy. They weaken your nations by messing or meddling with your economy. America is the one that says that the, fight, the money of Liberia is no good. America is the one that says, in fact, not just Liberia, all the continent of Africa, your money value is half or less compared to the American dollar. You got the IMF here, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank. Those two are financial institutions that control the economy of the world. It was the fallen angels who taught them how to build and collapse economies, how to build and collapse economic systems. The Caucasians, the Khazarians, the Esau, Edomites, they was a mountainous people. Okay, they were a mountainous, barbaric people. They were ignorant to economies, markets, financial systems, how to build missiles, how to uh, build rocket ships. All of these automated, digitized systems, they were ignorant to how to create them. Everything that you see uh, from a technology standpoint in our society is the result of something supernatural, which is from the works or the hands of supernatural beings. Some may call them demigods, uh, fallen angels, demons, whatever you want to call them, they're supernatural beings. They don't have physical access to this world. Okay? You can't put uh, supernatural feats on the, the, the works or the hands of natural mortal beings. Okay, in fact, that's giving too much credit to the so-called white man to say that he is Lucifer, who I mentioned earlier is a fallen angel. Verse 13, watch this. For thou hast said, in, this is what Lucifer, Babylon would say, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. What does that mean? 1969, Alfonso. Are you familiar with this? The space? Is that a space? Yes. 1969, when America landed on the moon. Yeah. They were the first nation to get up there and say the eagle has landed. Right. So let's get some more. Re recently, they created something called the Space Force in America, which is another military branch of America. Here it is here. United States Space Force. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are they trying to do? I'm going to show you in a moment. Here we go. They're, go, they're sending their shuttles into space. Okay. Let's get some more. I, I just want to show you the images. Then I'm going to get to the scripture again in a moment. Mm -hmm. All right. Going up towards the heavens. All right. So now, watch, let's read it again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse uh, 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, meaning space. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's talking about space travel. Who's doing that? The white man, particularly the group here in America, mainly them. They are the foremost leaders in space exploration. Is it against the scripture? Oh, yes, because that's meant for the Lord up there. That's meant for the Lord and the angels. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and we're going to be moving back and forth, and I know you're going to get me into the scripture here. So my question here is, uh, uh, was God aware that Lucifer is a destroyer? Is uh, he's, he's meant to destroy things, to dismantle things, to distract all? I, I want to know that. Let's talk plain. Let's talk plain, our father. Lucifer is the so-called white man. Lucifer is the white man. He's the one that is weakening the nations economically. He's the one that's traveling into space. It's him. Talk plain. Don't you don't gotta talk in a metaphor anymore. Don't be scared. <laughs> why, why, why was he sent down here to us? Why? Why did he sent down? The white man was born. That's Esau. You and I come from Jacob. The white man comes from Esau, Genesis 25, 25. Okay? 
That's the history. That is the history. Okay. <laughs> the white man is Babylon the Great. The white man is Lucifer. The white man is the oppressor. Again, the so-called white man was taught, inspired, and possessed by principality demon spirits, also known as fallen angels or the Nephilim. He was he was taught by them to come up with all the major inventions we've witnessed between the 18th to 21st centuries. Coding, automated systems, artificial intelligence, GPS systems, how to build militaries and artillery, space programs, the grid system that's run by electricity. Figureheads like Bill Gates, Thomas Edison, Mark Zuckerberg, and the Wright brothers, they joined the Luciferian Brotherhood. So the event, the invent can be attached to their name and they could be the figurehead. No man is responsible for sitting up in his room at night and just thinking up these things. The, the, yes, man does have some ideas, but the fallen angels are the ones who are able to put their power and associate their abilities with all of these inventions that you see today that just we've become so used to, accustomed to, we take for granted. This is all supernatural work. And it was done on purpose so that the system can be collapsed. And then Lucifer himself can come and reign in this kingdom where he's attempting to build an army to go against the Most High God. So Lucifer is not the spiritual. So that stupid thought that Lucifer is Satan up in the sky is false. The Bible says this is a man. This is man. This is man. So that false narrative of Christianity has to end. It must stop. The scriptures referring to Lucifer as a quote unquote man is a metaphor. Jesus was referred to as the son of man and God was referred to in Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 as a quote unquote man of war. Okay, so we know that the, the, the Bible does use metaphors, but God is not a mortal man, neither is Lucifer a mortal man. Okay, I'm going to go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 through 16. It says in verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord of God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in the garden of Eden. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, oinks, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. This doesn't sound like a mortal man. The mortal men don't walk on fiery stones. Mortal men are not covered with sapphire and turquoise and jasper and beryl and oinks. Mortal men were not the anointed cherub uh, that covered the throne of God. Okay, it says, verse 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, 
from the midst of the fiery stones. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? You hear what the Bible is saying? The Bible is saying that Lucifer, Babylon the Great, is man, and they would shake kingdoms. They would cause the earth to tremble. The Vietnam War, both of the world wars, the Great Depression, and every major atrocity of the 20th and 21st century derives from the pact that the synagogues made with the fallen angels. Okay, when they came in 1948, before they came, they had already owned the banks, but a portion of their people, they owned the banks, they owned the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, their, their people, the Rothschilds, those are the synagogues. Okay, so they needed this system to complete the atrocity after atrocity, every major atrocity they needed to take place so that that's a sacrifice to the fallen angels. Okay, because the fallen angels needs man to sin and man man's sin is what gets him more power in this world. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. Now I want to stress for the iniquity of their fathers. White people today, they love to say, I didn't colonize Africa. I didn't enslave the blacks. That was my fathers. We just live off the benefits of it. So you know what's wrong with that? They don't want to take is that, is that to try to exclude themselves. They don't want to take the blame. They are exactly. not. Let me tell you about white man law for a second. If you steal a car, you Alfonso. You steal a car and you give it to me and I'm caught driving it. Not only do I go to jail, guess who else goes to jail? Who? Oh. You, because you stole it yeah, and, and you gave it to me. And you didn't ask me as to how I got it and you jumped, you got inside too and you were chilling up. So you are collaborator. Do you also you didn't you collaborate? Uh -huh. So now watch. So when the Bible says prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, the children of white people today say, no, 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 no. God can't punish me because my fathers did that. Okay. But then we say, but you're living off the wealth and resources that they're currently, that they stole and are currently stealing. Correct. The word says he will curse up to the third and fourth generation. When this society ends, whites will have no more descendants. Hence the reason that they have to do 1,000 years of servitude. Okay. And uh, the so-called white man has been the ruler of this fallen world. When God created this this earth, the world was 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 perfect. Okay, there was no sin from that standpoint. When he cast Lucifer out of heaven, yes, Satan was in the Garden of Eden. But from the standpoint of man being on this earth. When God created the conditions for man on this earth, it, it was perfect. Everything that he made was good for man. Okay. When the, when this world and this society comes to an end, the so-called white man is ruled over a fallen world. Therefore, they, they have to answer and their generations have to answer in the next life for what happened to this fallen world which was once a perfect world. So Alfonso, again, Isaiah 14 proves that Lucifer is man. Lucifer is Babylon. Lucifer is the oppressor. Lucifer is the golden city. That's man. What man is it talking about? The white man. Because it's not the Arabs that said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The white man did that. It's not the Africans that said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. The white man did that, okay? It's the white man who is oppressing us, who's doing space travel, plane travel. It's him. It's him. It's him. Dude, you just limited the power of God to your five senses. Lucifer was oblivious to the power of God. God cast him out. The Lucifer had no idea. He had no opposition to him. He had no idea of the other side of God. 
he'd yet to experience the wrath of God prior to him falling from heaven. Okay, or that perfect state that the world was in, because the scripture says that he was in the Garden of Eden. It didn't say that he was in heaven. Okay, also, Lucifer had yet to experience any imperfections. So when God cast him out, he saw that he became Satan, which means adversary. He became an adversary to God or to righteousness, okay? You can't pin all of those things on mortal men, okay? The scriptures call, calls Lucifer a murderer. Satan was a murderer from the beginning. The so-called white man was uncivilized. They were uncivilized, barbaric people. They were uncivilized, barbaric, mountainous people before they came down and started conquering the, the darker races. Okay, the fallen angels taught them how to do all of those things. They taught them how to make weapons, how to create systems that would, would benefit them and their white privilege. The, the Caucasians, Khazarians, the so-called white man, uh, Jewish, they were taught all of these things and they made pacts with uh, the, the kingdom of darkness so that they can be the recipients of generational wealth. And all they did was pass the wealth down from generation to generation. OK, they had no idea how to create missiles and launch rockets, how to create economic systems. To, to, so that they can collapse and families could be broken up. They, Satan wanted those things to happen so that he can destroy God's creation. Therefore, in turn, they believe that Satan or Lucifer is God because of what he blessed them with. They were once the, the low peoples of the earth. OK, they were up in the Caucasus Mountains in the colder climates that they couldn't take the sun. OK, they that was a climate of suffering for them. OK, the, the scripture says that. Unless you repent and unless you forgive. That you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if the white man is Lucifer, then you're taking away his ability to repent. Lucifer or Satan is the only one who cannot repent because he's blasphemed. His sentence has already been set in stone. As I mentioned earlier, he has a sentence of 1000 years to eternity. First, he's going to serve the thousand years, as the book of Revelation states. He's going to serve a thousand years in the bottomless pit. And then after he's let out for a time, he'll be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet already are. And they'll be there for all eternity. OK, it's talking about a spiritual being, a spiritual criminal who is sentenced by a supreme spiritual being in God, the most high. OK, there is no flesh. The flesh is our enemy, which is a whole nother subject. OK, but Lucifer is on Lake Row for attempting to destroy and partially destroying God's creation, also foolishly attempting to overthrow the Most High God and uh, con convincing an innumerable amount of angels to fall from God's grace along with him. That's That's been his ammo. The, the crimes of mortal men cannot be measured and aligned with what a fallen spiritual criminal 
like Lucifer has done. You can't compare the two. Okay. And if you seriously think that the white man is the devil, again, you're underestimating the power of Christ and the forgiveness of sins. And if you believe that the white man is the devil, what, what who do you pray to at night? What do, who are you rebuking when you go to sleep? Because you, that, that would mean that you're rebuking the wrong, the wrong entity. Okay. You, when you go for forgiveness to ask for forgiveness at night, and praying to God, who are you asking for forgiveness in opposition to? The e evil spirits are sent to get human beings to stir up unforgiveness in their heart. The white man can't do that. So if you don't believe that, then you don't believe in the power that has been given to us to cast out the spirits that stir up those issues of the heart and internally in a man's heart. Okay. And for those of you who watch this video, I want you to learn from this. Okay. Because Satan is very, very good at what he does and stirring up the hearts of man and the imaginations of man to concoct all of these theories about who he is. Okay. Yes. The so-called white man is, has been used as a vessel by Lucifer, by Satan, to destroy this world and cause it to be in a fallen state. But there's a difference between the vessel and the source that possesses that vessel, whether that's for righteousness or evil. Okay. But God bless you guys. Uh, Hope you learned something from this video. Lucifer is on Lake Row, people. And that is the reason, a big reason for the evil that we are witnessing in this world. But glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Enjoy the rest of your day.